Benchmarking is racing for computers. It's just literally, you know, enthusiasts who really want to get the best out of their machines will often do insane things to them, such as using liquid nitrogen to cool the CPUs down. Um, the whole aim is to get the best benchmarking scores in the world. Really, it's, 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 it's like any sort of sport, if you like. My name is Steve Anderson. I'm from uh, Intel IT. Paul Watkinson. I uh, go under the username of Sasha35 and I'm from Benchtech UK. We're at Intel today to show a comparison of the Intel 965 i7 Extreme Edition chip. We're on stock air for cooling. The chip runs at 3.2 gigahertz and later on today what we're going to be doing is running the chip on liquid nitrogen also to show the difference in performance. We've got two benchmarks lined up, um, one called W-Prime, which is basically a system bench. It shows the utilisation of all the cores and how fast it can calculate those results. And another one is a 3D Mark 06, which basically uses the graphics power and CPU power to calculate an overall performance of speed and then rerun these benchmarks and show you the performance increase of running liquid nitrogen and extreme voltage on this chip and overclocking it, what kind of performance increase we can get then. Uh, basically, we're rendering uh, frames now. Most of the, the work taken on here is pure graphical power, but it does use CPU power as well. How much data can go through the CPU, um, all these calculations have to still be taken on board. Without a good CPU behind it, the frames here would drop considerably anyway. The first two graphics scored a score of 8,194. The second graphic scores was 10,481. And the CPU score was 6,105. We're now going to run a program called W Prime, which is a multi thread CPU benchmark. This utilizing all the power of the CPU with a time of 8.28 seconds for that benchmark. Um, what we're going to do now is prep the board up, get it ready for some liquid nitrogen cooling and see what we can overclock this normal 3.2 or 3002 megahertz chip to and run these benchmarks and see what kind of improvement we see. Because we're, we're going down to real extreme temperatures, we need to make sure there's no condensation going on any electrical components. We use this putty, uh, make sure it's well pushed down and that stops any condensation. Then a nice little bit of spongy neoprene, which just fits on the top. Massive copper um, that we pour the LN2 in. Ceramic Arctic Silver, which is very good for thermal conductivity. That is uh, gonna sit on the CPU. Gonna put some memory in. Um, then I will just switch the system on all that stock just to warm the pot up to make sure it's sealed properly, switch it off and then start pouring liquid nitrogen. The whole purpose is to find out how fast we can get these processes to run under any circumstances. So we freeze them down as cold as we can possibly get them and uh, see what benchmarks we can get and hopefully with a bit of luck, one or two records. A few leaves off the branches here. We immerse it for a couple of seconds, you can hear it ticking and crackling. And you see now that everything has just become hyper brittle. And this is the effect it has when it, when it hits things. And you need to be very careful how you manage using liquid nitrogen. But uh, we've filled this full of leaves now, so we've got to dump it. The temperature of the liquid is about minus 190 degrees centigrade. Now it evaporates pretty quick. Uh, we better see how it does in some processes. So we're just going to beat it up into windows. You can fire it up without having any coolant in there. Uh, the, the heat, the copper vessel you use, weighs a good three kilos. So there's a ton of heat dissipation in there. So we're just going to let it boot up at stock speeds and uh, start cooling it down. So we just need to fire up a just little thermal monitoring tool. That's what I wanted to see. 
So what's actually seen there is, is actually the temperature of the process of the four cores in the processor. We're going to start cooling them down. So the liquid nitrogen is bubbling away, and you'll see the temperatures of the processor start to fall. Well, the temperature is dropping now. It's dropping to minus three, minus four. You see, one core is hot. It's about mm, ten degrees hotter than the others. But that's not a big issue. We're not worried about that too much. Intel processor thermal sensors operate to keep the processor safe at high temperatures. So at low temperatures, they're very inaccurate. Minus 14, minus 15. It's got to be way lower than that, though. Yeah, minus 14. I'm not surprised. It's minus 14 degrees is what I'm getting in my thermal sensor here. And that's it. They'll just stay and sit there at minus 14. And that's fine. That's good. You never pour too much liquid nitrogen in. You just dose it, dose it, dose it, dose it nice and slow. It's just going to drop the temperature right down past 140, 150 degrees. Nothing you can do about it trying to try and dig it out. So you pour it in and dose it slowly so you can actually maintain a temperature. That's why we do it. Minus 45 degrees centigrade right now. As you see, mouse is still working. What we're looking for is a system to physically freeze up and the exact temperature that, that, that occurs. Minus 51, 52 degrees, it'll start falling fairly quickly now. Minus 80 degrees and falling. So the processor itself is frozen solid. Even though you don't have any real effective moving parts in a processor, the electrical characteristics have changed so greatly. This is the effect you'll have. This is a classic cold boot problem. The board just won't fire. So you see the boards light up and then just go out straight away. Okay, I'm going to have to warm that up. Yeah. You know what's going to boot if you see this little blue light appear just here? 119. We're good. 119. Yeah, you're right. It was something weird. 60% of it is hardware, 40% of it is operating system skill and the ability to tune your application environment to get the best results possible. So we also tune the BIOS. We turn off all the unnecessary stuff. We turn off everything, all the power protection, all thermal protection we, we shut down. Any power saving technologies disable any devices we're not actually using for the benchmarks. Right, okay, that'll do nicely. No, it's good. 10, enter, go for it. We've got a nifty little feature on this board like Steve has. Um, we use this called Turbo V. This is called Tweak It. On this, I can actually change the, the ratio, which is the multiplier. Um, you can see up there, or I can change the B clock speed as well. So, you know, it gives us a nice little option. Right, so we're at a 29 ratio now. Mine is 117, mate. 30, did it take? 30, yeah, it's gone in. 4.8, yeah, let's try 31. 4960 at 1.44 volts. What's that gonna take us if I do a 32? Core speed 5119.8 megahertz. B clock 140. So core speed is 5181.4 megahertz. Yeah, and we're at minus 119. That's right on the money. So let's try and see if we can beat that 5199. 5220 megahertz. Still at 1.456. The voltage is so low, I can't, I can't get over it. 5291.9, a 5.3 would be really great. 5.3, 26.2 megahertz. And it's gone, so that is it. it. 5.3, so that's, that's the limit. We're pushing the real boundaries, whether it be motherboard, memory, cards, chips, um, everything, you know, right down to the power supply. We're pushing the real boundaries beyond what they've been designed for.
but it's also, it's actually, believe it or not, it may sound strange, but this is actually very enjoyable to do. Uh, particularly when you're sitting in your garage, it's three in the morning, you, you're relying on super cold temperatures to help you, and you finally get your personal best or, or, or you get a world record or a really good score. There's nothing like it, it's just pure bliss.